Denise. We have Mr. Ethan Ruby. Uh, he is a successful entrepreneur and pioneer in the medical cannabis industry, having helped thousands of patients suffering from debilitating pain conditions. After graduating from the University of Pennsylvania, Ethan co-founded a successful New York City day trading firm. His life changed dramatically in 2000 when he was hit by a car, leaving him a T6 paraplegic. Ethan founded Theraplant after realizing traditional approaches to paraplegic pain relief were incompatible with high-level functioning. Ethan? Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Zarr. Uh, it's an honor to be here and speaking to you, and um, it's finally to be able to consider medical cannabis in the realm of alternative therapies that are legitimate. I've been doing this for over 10 years now, and the medicinal properties of this plant are never cease to amaze me. And I'm so glad to be able to contribute what potentially could be some pain reduction for patients in the context of all these other healthcare professionals. So thank you. All right. Cannabis and pain management. I do disclaimer, cannabis is still considered a class one scheduled narcotic with no medicinal value. Uh, as was mentioned, I am the CEO of Theraplan, or I was the CEO of Theraplan. I am the founder uh, clinical research is still limited, uh, but there needs to be much more out there. The anecdotal study or the anecdotal information that is out there is there's a tremendous amount of beneficial effects for both acute pain and chronic pain uh, for people dealing with breast cancer or any um, ailment. Uh, I did find this, uh, this slide that I wanted to in, uh, put in here. Uh, related specifically to breast cancer, that breast cancer patients have found significant benefits using medical cannabis in their either treatment of the cancer itself or to deal with a lot of the um, side effects that come with either chemotherapy or radiation. But unfortunately, to date, there still are not studies that directly go after the effects of various cannabis in different ratios specifically for breast cancer. Hopefully that will be changing soon. Um, won't go too much about it. Everyone knows what a, the difference between acute pain and chronic pain. The only thing I want to mention about acute pain is that if we can get to um, treating the pains uh, effectively and dealing with the underlying cause, then you can prevent acute pain from becoming chronic pain. Uh, therefore, the opioid addiction and other problems that come with prolonged pain medication can be stopped before they even get started. Uh, so how does cannabis work in our body? Uh, this was something that was new to me that I learned over the last decade, that we have an endocannabinoid system in our body. We have receptors all the way from our, from our brain down to our muscles and our toes. Uh, these receptors are responsible for things such as immune, uh, immune function, digestion, mem memory, inflammation, and pain control. Um, the endocannabinoid system works by having different endocannabinoids, the cannabinoid receptors, and the different enzymes that trigger them. Uh, I am not a doctor, although I have played one on TV a few times, but my entire family is doctors, so I have a little bit of information about this, but I certainly am not a medical professional. Um, cannabinoids are the active compounds that are found in cannabis that directly interact with the cannabinoid receptors that are found throughout the body. Uh, I can't go into all of them now because we are limited in time, but I will talk a little bit about the main ones that we hear about, THC, THCA, CBD, um, THC is the main active ingredient that does produce the psychoactive effect, that high feeling that people can experience. Um, same with the THC, one is activated and one is not. Uh, CBD is available, I think, through Amazon now. You can buy it from any store. It can be shipped to you directly. CBD does not contain any of the active ingredients that give you the psychoactive effect, so it will not get you high. Um, but CBD does show beneficial effects when in terms of inflammation. Um, so it is something to consider outside of THC if you're worried about the psychoactive effects or getting high. Uh, terpenes are really responsible for some of the different feelings associated with taking THC, THCA, or CBD. THC and CBD are just the, the cannabinoids but the effect of feeling either elated or 
more docile can really come from the terpenes that are in each plant. So if you're using the raw material plant, that it becomes very important in your selecting strains when we're talking about extraction, where you can pull the specific cannabinoids out of the plant, this becomes really important because you can actually create a specific ratio of cannabinoids and terpenes to cater towards a specific effect. If it's appetite suppression, if it's pain, appetite stimulation, uh, if it's pain reduction, um, if it's for migraines, et cetera. Uh, the entourage effect is something that you may or may not have heard about. And this talks about combining CBD or combining THC together with the other cannabinoids. So if you're taking CBD, just CBD, yes, there will be a benefit. If you're taking THC and just THC, yes, there is a benefit. But there have been studies showing that the effect of combining these two things together has a much better result for what you're looking for. Um, I believe it has a, something to do with the membrane of the cell wall and having better absorption of the different cannabinoids. Um, but again, I would probably leave that to somebody more medically trained to explain. Um, I did want to briefly just touch on, we're talking about alternatives to pain management. We've all paid attention and know about the opioid deaths that are plaguing our states, our towns, our communities. Um, Keeping people off addictive opioids is very important. And when you're using something like cannabis that is not physically addictive, that has had no fatalities and, and overexposed death, we're talking about a much more mild medication that can hopefully stop a lot of the problems when it comes to pain, long-term pain management that sometimes can develop. Uh, again, the goal of cannabinoid-based drugs is to find and discover the medicinal properties in them. There is more and more studies that are being done. There's more and more studies that are needing to be done. But at this point in time, as opposed to 10 years ago, it's undisputable that there's medicinal value in these plants. There needs to be more research. My advice with you in consulting your healthcare professional, whether you're dealing with brain cancer, breast cancer, or any other types of ailments, ask the questions, know your options, make educated decisions. There's a lot of information out there right now, and I um, encourage you all to seek it out. So I thank you for your time. Um, I did ask somebody asked me to throw in a picture. This is what one of our grows looks like with a with flowers that are about to be harvested. Um, natural medicine, uh, and this is uh, part of our extraction room where some of the um, medicine is turned into specific formula ratio. That is a CO2 extraction machine um, that can separate out the different terpenes, cannabinoids, and then we can make different ratios depending on the different ailments we're trying to treat. Thank you so much, Ethan. A lot of patients um, have expressed concern to me that they are reluctant um, to use medical marijuana, to use CBD, because it might interfere with, with their ability to work. Um, and in, in spite of, you know, doing our best to educate regarding the differences between CBD and THC, um, what do you normally counsel people in terms of the most um, effective way and the safest way um, to take cannabis or to use cannabis medically? Thank you for the question. Um, the, the first, the best way is to start low and go slow. Start with as low dose as possible and increase it slowly over time. Uh, for people who are just taking CBD, uh, the effects of taking it are usually not felt until 10 or even 14 days after taking a consistent dose. Uh, if you're starting with CBD, you could start as low as 10 milligrams um, and try to work up from there. Um, I usually try to counsel a, an adult person to try to get up to 50 milligrams a day, um, taking some in the morning, some at nighttime. Um, but again, you want to start low go very slowly when it comes to, especially when it comes to the THC side. Uh, if you're ingesting it, it's going to have a very, very different effect than if you're inhaling it. So that's another situation to, to be mindful of. Uh, if you're vaporizing or smoking the flower, you're going to have an almost immediate effect. If you're taking a pill or a tincture and swallowing it, uh, it's going to take, could take two to three hours depending on when your last meal was. Um, a very common mistake is somebody eats a little bit of THC, 
wait 15 minutes, they didn't feel anything, they eat a little bit more, wait another 15 minutes, they don't feel anything. Now they're taking double the dose and it's not, it hasn't even been an hour, they still don't feel anything. Then they take more and now the first dose starts to kick in. So now they're in a, 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 a very overdone dose. Now, the good thing is you're, you're not going to kill yourself if you overdo it. If you take 100 milligrams and not 10, you're not going to die. Um, so you s certainly need to be mindful of the psychoactive effects on that. You probably need to lie down and go to sleep. So start low, go slow, uh, and be mindful of the delivery methods because they're going to have a different effect on the body. Can you tell us a little bit about the use of cannabis and medical marijuana in kids? Um, is there an age that it's too young to start? Do you have any idea what the American Academy of Pediatrics thinks about it? Thank you for the question. I will say my father, who is a practicing pediatrician of over 40 years, who actually recently retired, he was one of the first certifying pediatric doctors for kids under 18 in Massachusetts. And at one point, all 100 patients that were in the system, he was one of the two doctors that had to certify. So from a pediatrician's perspective that's been doing this a long time, he was very supportive of it. Um, so 18 is usually the age. You usually see cannabinoids being used in children under 18 more for epilepsy um, and some of those conditions. I have not seen a lot of it on pain treatment sides, um, but I'm sure that there is some benefit. You know, you, you really want to be careful. The child's brain is still developing and a lot of the harm that has been attributed to cannabis um, really would be more significant or impactful in a non-matured brain or brain that's still uh, evolving. Um, CBD would certainly be much more benign if you're interested in, in working with a cannabinoid on somebody under 18 years of age. Uh, you do want to be very, very careful with the THC component. Um, and to my knowledge right now, it's really only being used to address epilepsy and seizures. Exactly. Okay. Well, I think that that is going to pretty much um, conclude our our panel discussion. Um, thank you all so much for joining uh, and for also and for submitting your questions. They were excellent.